What a, what a gift God has given us. An incredible gift. You know, I, uh, studying through this week, there was just so many times that I get a little overwhelmed of just exactly what we're talking about. We're not just talking about a child being born. We're talking about a gift that God set out before us from before time. Since before there was any earth or any skies or any galaxies or any suns or anything from the time that we don't have any clue of, eternity past is what we call it, that God had already chosen to create you and me and he had already chosen to, as he knew that we would sin and sin would overwhelm our, our lives and cause us to be guilty of that which we could not pay. Not even death would pay for the cost of the sin that we would have because the, 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 the fact is, is that even those that die without Christ, their quote unquote payment will last eternity. They will never be able to pay for the sin that they have committed against a holy God. And yet, as I would study this, I kept coming back in to the to the, the the thought of of what it was like. And I, I I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna get there. We're talking about the virgin birth this time. And our as Baptists, we believe that the that the, the the account of Mary being a virgin, not just a young lady, as some Bible versions choose to put it but a virgin was chosen by God without her knowledge until it was announced to her that she would carry the one who had been from everlasting. Why? I've said it again. I've said it before. Because we needed a savior. We needed a perfect sacrifice. The blood of something that could be called perfect and the only thing God could do was come and die for us himself and that's what he did he became the lamb of God and you're seeing here Mary had a little lamb <laughs> but the child that she brings forth is the creator that's what I put at the top of the page in big letters on your notes he is the creator he he since since before creation he has chosen you I, I ran across this statement that I put in your notes. I, it, it says, a thousand times in history has a baby become a king. But only once in history has a king become a baby. And uh, I don't know who wrote it, but they had it right. Is Jesus Christ, the middle person of the Godhead, God the Son, the Son of God, being the king of the universe and king of king and the lord of lords chose to be a baby in that fragile state that you guys all know about what it's like having a little one tucker you guys have been through it more than most i think <laughs> but it's a it's it's that it's that hopeless helpless feeling of oh what do i do now <laughs> you know i can't imagine what it was like to hold hold your son the first time being that little, that's, that's, quite, that's quite the thing. But if you think about God doing that so that there could be a blood sacrifice, so that his own law could be fulfilled, that's just amazing. And it gets to me once in a while. John 1, 1 through 4 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was this, in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. Jesus, the Son of God, God the Son, God incarnate, the only Savior of mankind, chose to become a little child just for you and for me. We don't know a whole lot about his childhood, but we do know a lot about the fact of what we've talked about some before. He is the Word of God. 
mentioned in here, the logos, the very expression, if you will, the very essence of God lived out in front of us so that we could know him, so that we could see him, so that we could handle him, as John wrote. It's amazing. I, 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 the MLT puts it this way, and I love it. John 1, 1 through 3. In the beginning, the word already existed. I think they got that right. The word was with God, and the word was God. He existed from the beginning with God, and everything, he created everything through him, and nothing was created except through him. The, the statement was made sometime this week. A conversation was made that, uh, you know that that Jesus was somehow maybe just a created being, and the question was answered by the fact of how can the cre- how can he who created everything create himself? He it, it didn't happen that way. He was the creator, and it, and and that bears some fruit in under in thinking about in the in the fact that Jesus was God, God incarnate. Uh, he was existing before anything else was created. And he was not only with God, he was and is God. His name is Yeshua, which means Jehovah is salvation. You know, we sometimes overlook the fact that this was Jehovah God. That, that, that Jesus, no wonder he was fully God because he was Jehovah God. But... He is also man that came to die for us and therefore he is salvation. And so we never want to forget that. We never want to overlook that. In the, in the scriptures, it says of him that he is, who, he is Jehovah. The word, the word Jehovah literally means he is who he is. <laughs> when when Moses asked him, "What do I say that the, who do I say that has called me to do this?" and God told him, He said, "I am that I am." Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, "I am hath sent me unto you." The word "I am" is the word Jehovah, and it and and it it is it is that description of of what that word means. Jehovah means the self existing one who revealed himself see god revealed himself in jesus christ in in revelation twenty two thirteen, he says i am the alpha and the omega the first and the last the beginning and the end he is from the beginning he will be at whatever end there is there it's everlasting it's eternal and you're going to be with him if you know jesus christ is your savior but if there were to be an end it would be him Genesis 1, 1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. I, th- I, just, I just threw these in and, 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 and want to draw you back to what we've studied already. Prophesied that the Messiah would come to defeat Satan. In Genesis 3, 15, God said that there would be enmity between him and, 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 the, and the, the, the seed of the woman and the seed of, of Satan. And that he shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. He was prophesied, as we saw last week, from the lineage of David. I found the son of David, the son of Jesse, after my, a man after my own heart, who will do my will. Of this man's offspring, God has brought to Israel a Savior, Jesus, as he promised. He was born of the, of the house of David. He, the prophesied one, born of a virgin, he was in Isaiah seven fourteen. therefore God the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. And Mary said to the angel, how can this be since I am a virgin? See, she, the, the, the Bible is very clear that the virgin birth is important. Why is the virgin birth so important? Well, I'm not going to get into a deep discussion with you, but I will tell you this. It was miraculous. There has never been a virgin ever conceive before, nor will there ever be. Because God himself had to make it to where they could not take it in any other fashion other than the fact that it was a miracle. A miracle was performed there. 
She said, I, I, I'm a virgin. And the angel said, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called the Son of God. Matthew 1, 18 through 25 says, Now the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way when his mother, Mary, had been betrothed to Joseph. Before they came together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. And her husband, Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. But he, as he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. And there is that Jehovah is salvation again. For he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, a virgin will conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, God with us. When Joseph woke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord had commanded him. He took his wife and knew her not until he, she had given birth to a son, and he called his name Jesus I want to just take a, a minute and talk about this. Can you imagine the pressure and the and the and, and the, the heaviness upon a couple for her as a as a young virgin to all of a sudden be told that she would have to bear a child without a man, that she would be overwhelmed by God's presence, and that he she would just be come she would just conceive in her womb, and that that conception was going to be the Messiah, the Son of God, the one who has been, been for, uh, foretold from ever, from forever. Can you imagine the pressure of trying to tell her mom and dad? Can you imagine the pressure of facing her friends day by day on the street as she got bigger and bigger and bigger? And it was totally, un, uh, totally anathema for her to, to do so. That's no wonder, that's the reason why Joseph in his, in his grief was considering divorcing her. Because you see, when you're, when, you're, when you're betrothed in the Old Testament, it was the same thing as being married, only you didn't come together until the time that the father of the, of the husband chose that time. Well, that time hadn't come, and all of a sudden she shows up pregnant. Well, Joseph trying to keep her from having any more pain in her life than he could. He was just going to go ahead and go through the divorcement, thinking humanly, until God said, no, this is of me. And now you've got the picture of the pressure of Joseph trying to explain to his friends and to everyone in town why he has a virgin bride that is now, now pregnant, and it wasn't them. And everybody said, uh-huh. <laughs> and the shame of what they would go through for those nine months was incredible, really. I think my mic just died, didn't it? And so, and so when we, I'll just talk loud. And so when we go to really putting this into, the, into perspective, we see what it is to be... Uh, in this situation, this couple, I turned it back on, but I don't think it has any better. Anyway, the anyway, the, this this is a this is such a pressure on this couple, and yet you notice God did not spare them the pressure. It makes me and it makes you and I reevaluate the things we go through day by day, and we think, but God, where are you? Oh, you haven't felt nothing yet until you be a virgin and try to explain that you didn't have no intercourse with nothing around you and you're just pregnant. Uh-huh. Sure. But this is the way God does things. He doesn't always explain himself. He just says, this is my will. And it came to happen. As, he, as, as we look into it, this, this one would be recognized as the, son of, as, the, as the Son of God, as the Lord come from heaven Try to explain that to your friends. Oh, I, that's okay. I, I'm pregnant by God. Oh, okay. 
And, and, and the, the one that I'm carrying is the Messiah. And all the rabbis would have thrown a wild fit because they didn't know it first. Because they weren't, well, the thing is, the first thing that should have told them anything was when a virgin says, I'm pregnant, but it's by miraculous means, that should have rung a bell somewhere in somebody's mind that this is the fulfillment of scripture because it was. Isaiah 9, chapter 6 through 8 says, And unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and, he, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father. Notice that? Notice that? The everla this is Jehovah God. This is the Everlasting Father. The Prince of Peace, of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judge, judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. The Lord sent a word unto Jacob in, in lighted upon Israel. He was God the Son. He was truly the one that had been recognized as a Messiah, and he would be, uh, he as he was as he was recognized, as he was seen in context. The very first one that recognized him was an unborn child himself. You th you talk about a powerful argument against abortion, folks. Looking at this. An unborn child is just barely conceived in the womb, approaches, his mother approaches her cousin who is with child six months along, and her child recognizes her child, and he jumps for joy in the womb of his mother. Now, I bet that was a joy, don't you ladies? I bet that was an experience to have him jump for joy in your, in your womb. And have him just, he, he didn't just kick her. He didn't just kind of roll over and like, a, like, one, like one picture I saw of a lady, she took a picture of her belly and there was, a, there was a foot sticking out. The whole impression of the foot was sticking out through the skin. You know, it wasn't just that. This one decided to do a dance inside of her. He says in Luke 1, 1 through 43, at the sound of Mary's greeting, Elizabeth's child leaped within her, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. I bet she was. I bet this overpowered her. Elizabeth gave a glad cry and exclaimed to Mary, God has blessed you above all women, and your child is blessed. Why am I so honored that the mother of my Lord should visit me? You see, the, you see the reference to Jesus Christ being the Lord of Lords? She recognized the Holy Spirit come upon Elizabeth and she identified not only that he, was, uh, that he was the Messiah, but that he was her Lord already. She had put her faith in the Lord before he was even born. John the Baptist recognized him then and he recognized him later as Jesus approaches the the, the uh, approaches where he had been, uh, where John had been baptizing, and John looks up and he and he as Jesus walked and he said, "Behold, the Lamb of God, come to take away the sins of the world." See, John the Baptist recognized him back then, and John the Baptist recognized. Somebody asked the other day, "Well, John, did John even know who he was?" Shoot, he knew him. He knew who he was before birth. He knew who he was when he approached him. I kind of like, have you, any of you ever watched The Chosen? Oh, man, you guys are missing out. That series is so good. It really is. But it shows them in, in context of what it would be like if Jesus was more than just a kind of a, a don't touch me type person. He was, it, it portrays him as being human, fully human and fully God at the same time. But whenever in the, in the, in the series, whenever he approaches John, John is this wild man looking, you know, with, with, with camel's hair clothing and, 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 you know, he'd just been out of the wilderness and they, and they go up to each other and they start kidding each other like cousins would. 
you know, and, 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 and talking back and forth. Like, I like that portrayal because I think John the Baptist knew who Jesus was and knew what ministry was coming. And I think John the, Jesus knew John the Baptist and he knew what kind of things that people talked about when they talked about you know, Dirty John or whatever you want to call him. You know, he, 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 he was out there in the wilderness all the time and people didn't understand that. But he recognized him from the womb. John the Baptist and Jesus were cousins and they loved each other. But God, it was not just Jesus as a man, but it was Jesus as the Son of God that we have to understand. Not just the, the Son of Man that would portray himself to everyone as fully human. He had to do that. But yet there were little inklings of, of what it was like to be a man and yet God at the fully same time. You see, when, when you start really understanding doctrine, you have to put him as fully God and fully human at the same time. You cannot have him one or the other. And he didn't like dance but, but back and forth. He was God all the time. That meant that everything that he went through from the time that his mother and dad always having to explain where he came from and having the ridicule of everything, including the Pharisees and the rabbis and the scribes, ridiculing them all the time. I wonder if whenever Jesus at the age of about 12 or 13 was left behind in Jerusalem and his mom and dad left, lost him. By the way, if you've ever lost a child in a department store, it's nothing like going three days down the road and realizing you don't know where your son is, <laughs> okay? They lost God, okay? But the thing is, is as they, as, as they go back, where do they find him? They find him in the temple. And what's he doing? He's taking questions from all of the, the priests and the rabbis and, the, and all of the educated men, and he's given them answers. They've never heard anything like this before. They've never heard a, a young boy who probably about the age of a, a bar mitzvah type age, they've never heard of him giving these kind of answers. Why not? Because he was God. And yet they couldn't accept him as such because that went against their political reasons also. And so whenever we really go to looking at, at who he was, we have to take him back that whenever he was man, but yet he walked on water, there was, I, I always like to, it's maybe a, a, not the exact way to say it, but it was like God leaked through for a little while, okay? <laughs> God, God, you know, this human could do he, he commanded the waters he command you know they they would uh, they, they were being in, in peril at sea and be scared to death that the boat was gonna was gonna capsize and and turn over and and there's all gonna be lost in the winds and and they wake jesus up and it's like what's the big deal guys peace be still and the whole sea come to a dead calm That, you see, God leaked through just a little bit, okay? It's whenever his mother takes him to, the, takes him to a, a wedding and, or they show up at the same time. He's an adult by this time and over 30 years old and, and, and Mary is, is aghast at the fact that she finds out that, the, that the, the couple has run out of wine at the table. And, and so she says to, the, to, to those that are in charge, she, he, Whatever he says to do, do it. And, and it was so much so that Jesus himself, Mom, what are you doing? It's literally about the way you ought to read it in your life. Is, is you know, Mom, it's not right. It's not quite the right time yet. But because it was his mom, he did. He, it, was, it must have been real close. <laughs> but, the, but the thing is, is he takes and he says, fill these and we're not talking about a little wine, guys. We're talking about 120 gallons. And it says, fill these jars, which were what? They were, the, they were the jars that were supposed to be perfectly clean. And by the way, they were stone jars. 
And stone was, it was supposed to be un, unable to be contaminated. He picked these jars that are big, big vessels, and he says, fill them with water. And they filled them with water, and he says, pour it out, start serving the guests. You know how many people were there probably went, <laughs> they just watched these people fill these things with water. And he's going to, they're going to pour out wine, and not only wine, but wine that the wine taster had never tasted before. You know why? Because you've never tasted what the grape juice before Eden tasted like. When you go to worshiping your Lord, you must look at him in the presence of everything he did. God was there as much as man was there. And so, you know, God gave him in this process, there's so much to study here, but he, I've taken you through it before, but, but you have to understand, God gave him a name which is above all names. There's never been anyone like him. There's never been anyone to, to not only was he come to save the world, he didn't just come and, and die on the cross and save the world and go by. He, he lived with us and he, and he talked with us. And I say us because if you're in your Bible, you live with him and you see what the, the response was to him. And he says, Philippians 2, 9 through 11 says, Wherefore God hath also highly exalted him and gave him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, Jehovah saves, every knee should bow. Of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Every knee is going to bow. I've said it many, many times. Mine are going to bow willingly. Mine bow every day in my own heart. Mine bow to him every day. And I, it's not going to be any problem that at the declaration of the name of Jesus, mine are going to be willing but there are going to be many. Can you imagine and kind of put into context the Antichrist? Satan himself, all of the demons, their knees are going to hit the floor whether they wanted to or not because he is Lord. He is Lord of Lords. He is King of Kings. And this was the little child that was coming upon the earth so that we might be able to see him and know him. He, the Bible was written, the, the, the Old Testament prophesies his coming. The New Testament talks about what it was to be, a, be around him as he was. He is the Alpha from the beginning and the Omega, the very last. And there, he has always been there. So the Alpha means from what we know way back before that, he was always God. And the Omega means from what we know as the, as the end of the book, it's going to go on for an eternity. And you do not want to miss that. And so why did he come? He came so that your sins could be forgiven and you could become a child of the king. That the minute you put your faith and trust in Him, the minute that you tell Him, I know I'm a sinner and my sins are going to overwhelm me and I'm going to have to pay for them for an eternity unless you do something. And whenever He takes you and says, your faith has made you whole, your sins are forgiven. At that moment, you are not just a child of God. At that moment, you become a joint heir with Jesus Christ. You are his son, so much so that you are in Christ and all God sees when he sees you. He doesn't see your sin. He doesn't see your past. He doesn't see anything else about you. He sees Jesus. A name above all names. The beginning and the end. The Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. For I am the one who was and who is to come. The one who, uh, who is, 
who was and is to come, the Almighty One. You know, the virgin birth doctrine, we as Baptists have chosen to say that it is a vital doctrine in Scripture. You must believe in the virgin birth. Just like you must believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. They're miracles. But God put them in his word and it's vital that it be that way because it had to be totally uncontaminated. I, I know there's lots of stories out there about the fact that they um, that, that if they could see the blood of Jesus, what would the DNA strands look like? Because we know that you and I, our DNA is my mom, her DNA and my dad, his, and they intertwine together. And that's basically my DNA. But have you ever thought about Jesus, Mary, but no one else except God and through the Father? I, I don't know whether he only had one strand of DNA or whether he had three. Mary's and God. <laughs> it doesn't matter. What matters is the fact there was no man. Joseph never claimed to be the father. Joseph Actually, we don't know a whole lot about Joseph. But I do know this, as a young man, he was, he was worth his salt. He, he grew up and he worked in the, in the carpenter's shop and, and, he, and he did these things because he knew something that came from his dad. His dad was a carpenter too, and that tells me that, oh, okay, we've got, a, we've got something from Joseph that, le that comes through. But the thing is, Joseph wasn't in the story very much because Joseph wasn't in the ballpark at all. It was Mary. And yes, we are not to worship Mary, but I do believe we should give respect always for the fact that she, her answer to the angel when the angel approached her and said, you're going to become the mother of the Messiah. Her answer was so perfect for what we need to recognize as our own, and that is, I'm just the handmaid of the Lord. Do with me as you want to. In your sense, it might be something God is calling you to do, and your response should be, here I am. I'm a servant of God. I, I, you do with me as you want to, Lord. As a young boy called into the ministry and not understanding what, every year goes by in my older age, I learn a little bit more about what I possibly saw in that dream and what it might have meant because it was too overwhelming for me. But the fact is, is when I got to be of age, I could not say no. It had to be. Why? Because when you are called, and we all are, you're called into your purpose for God. Your answer should be, here I am. Do with me as you want to. Isn't it interesting to study these things out and to look at what it is, to, what it means. But it does lead us to one thing. We are to adore him we are adore him as the Christ child, the, the, the perfect one that Mary carried in her womb. You know, what was it like to be around? Mary had other kids. Mary and Joseph had other kids. Can you imagine what it was like to be in the house? Something gets broke. Everybody turns around and goes, well, don't blame Jesus. He didn't do it. <laughs> you know, it, 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 was, it must have been... It must have been Amazing. You say, well, he might have done something wrong. Yeah, he, probably, he might have done something wrong as well, but it wouldn't sin, whatever it was. He was without sin. He never, he never lied. He never colored outside the lines whatsoever as far as, as far as man's, the law that was given was ever there. Walking and talking with him must have been amazing. Nothing ever come out of his mouth but truth. Nothing ever come out of his mouth but power of God. Even as a young man, well, we don't know what it was like from, the, from his young age to 12, and we don't know what it was like from there to 30. But we do know that whenever we see him, he, was, he never sinned. He who was without sin. So we adore him as the Messiah. And as I wrote it earlier, 
the Son of God, God the Son. He is the King of kings, the Lord of lords. He is the Savior of mankind. And this virgin birth story is true from one letter to the end letter. There's no lies. There's no what ifs. I believe, <laughs> I'm go back to that old poem. I'm going to have to dig that old poem out and read it to you someday. I've mentioned it several times. The, the ordination of Deacon, I can't remember which, what his name was. You no, know, he said they, they stand him up in front of there and, he's, and it's a black church and he's, they're questioning a new deacon coming in and they says, does you believe the Bible? And he said, I believe the Bible from kiver to kiver. I even believe the kiver because it says Holy Bible. Okay, that is my point exactly. God's word is God's word. I believe it. I will go to my death standing on it and you will too. If you're honest with God, you're his chosen. You're his chosen for your purpose. You say, I don't know what that purpose is. Oh, just take the next step and take the next step and God will keep opening it up until you're just serving him and you don't even know it. Worship him as the angels did when they busted through the sky and those shepherds jumped up protecting their sheep at night and jumped up in alarm and the skies filled with angels in the host of heaven crying out as loud as they can, Hosanna. Because the baby had been born that had been prophesied forever. I get chills thinking about it. Let's worship him this Christmas season. Whether you get to come worship with us or whether you're at your home, stop for a little while. Read the Christmas story. I made my kids memorize it. I bet you to this day my girls can still remember. I pounded it in them. The whole Christmas story, Luke chapter 2, that, that whole thing, they can still bring it. And, and, and I can still see them quoting that scripture and, and, and they made up little hand motions to help them remember what it was like to, you know, to go through that. But, you know, the, and they were sore afraid, you know, <laughs> and they, they'd grab their chest like they was having a heart attack, you know. And, and the thing is, we need to take and we need to read that ver those verses again and again and again. And remember that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, God the Son, was born unto us so that we would have a Savior. And all you have to do is say yes. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the, the day. We thank you, Lord, for protecting us and taking care of us. And I thank you for this season that we can come together and that we can be uh, a blessing to each other. Help us to see others in need. Help us to be able to touch base with those that need you most and tell them a, this amazing story. Stand for the word of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you stand with me? Mention this in a verse. We're going to sing it now. Everybody help me now. Jesus, name above all names, beautiful Savior, glorious Lord, Emmanuel, God is with us, blessed Redeemer. Praise God is with us. Emmanuel. God is with us. I've, that's next week, okay? God is with us. The birth had taken place, and what Mary, as we sang, what she held in her arms was the creator of the universe. Whew. Can't make that story up. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day and we ask that all of us would go home in our homes and we would continuously glorify you 
and, and bring praise to you, whatever we talk about, wherever we go, wherever we sit, wherever, whatever family is around us, that we would again bring them back to the true story of Christmas and that we would all be able to know you as Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Have a great day. Have a great week.